빛이 있는 사람 안 되고 빛이 없는 사람 좋아. Let's start with just a quick review of what we studied in the last class. So, discuss with your partner. What are these three things? The interest rate parity. What is interest rate parity? What is purchasing parity? Purchasing power parity and interest rate parity. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I asked the wrong question. <laughs> so discussing with your partner, we discussed about the hedging, right? So what factors? Do companies think about it when they're deciding to hedge or not? So discuss with your partner. Okay, so can anybody tell me what should the company think about when deciding to hedge or not? <laughs> yes, so we have to decide whether we are going to hedge or not, right? So first of all, is there any risk, right? So let's say there is a risk in the danger in the foreign investment, right? What else do we need to think about? Can anybody tell me? So there is a risk, we figured out there is a risk, so what do we need to think about now? The exchange rate, what about the exchange rate? Our expectation for the exchange rate, right? If the, we expect the exchange rate to move in our favour, are we going to hedge 100%? No. No, right? What if we expect it to move against us? We might hedge then, right? More. And then we have to think about how comfortable are we with our forecast? Is it easy to predict the future exchange rate? No. Right? So we have to think about how comfortable we are with our forecast. So we mentioned about financial contracts and operational hedges. And the last time I asked you to look at the web page of the CME. <coughs> CME is a futures and options exchange. So <coughs> the idea of an exchange was actually started in Japan uh, a number of years ago, right? So, the reason they had an exchange there was the farmers were selling the rice to the other farmers. Okay? 
But it was very hard to know about the price. So you're a farmer, and you're a farmer, and you're a farmer, okay? And I want to buy rice from the farmers, from my supermarket. So you tell me that you can deliver your rice in October. You tell me you deliver your rice in November, and you deliver your rice in September. December. Do you understand deliver? Yes. yes. Now your rice is slightly different than her rice. You make a different type of rice, and she makes a different type of rice, and you make a different type of rice, okay? And you can only provide me with 5 tons of rice. You can provide me with 10 tons, and you can provide me with 17 tons. How am I going to compare the prices? Who should I buy from? Can I compare the price? No, I can't. So in Japan they made this idea of an exchange, where all you guys come to the same market, you all have the same type of rice, you're all going to deliver on the same day, and the same amount. Okay, so you're going to deliver 5 tons of white rice in October. You're going to deliver 5 tons of white rice in October. You're going to deliver 5 tons of white rice in October. Now can I compare the price? Yes. Is that an easier market? Yes. So that's the idea of an exchange. Okay, exchange is standardized, standardized contracts. That is a standardized contract. Do you understand standard? Yes. Standard means the same, right? A standard. You can have standards for food, they have to be above a certain level, right? So standard means the same. So we can trade standardized contracts at on exchanges, right? So we looked at an example the last time of a standardized contract in agriculture, okay? So let's look at FX today. We are talking about foreign exchange, right? So FX products, they have a future contract. So let's look at the Euro, US dollar, okay? So here we can have contract specifications, okay? So contract specification, it is 125,000 euros. Can you see that? Yes. So this contract is for 125,000 euros to be changed into dollars. Can I change 127,000 euros? No. 233,000 euros? No. Just 125 is standard, okay, for this contract. When is the contract going to be delivered? Okay. Uh, <coughs> we can see the date. <coughs> On the second business day, immediately preceding the third Wednesday of the contract month, right? Usually Monday. So the third uh, weekend, weekday of the contract month, right? Monday. That's when we're going to deliver the money. So we're going to buy, this is a future contract for buying euros with dollars, right? So we're going to get 125,000 euros, okay? then it depends on the month. It should be a Monday, but it's going to be early in the month, right? Let's just say that next month, the 4th of December is a Monday, right? So I'm going to get this much euros on the 4th of December, okay? So then you decide the price. How many dollars are you going to pay for this? Okay, that's decided by the market. Okay, that's a futures contract. So people buy and sell this contract. You can have this, you can buy this contract of 125,000 euros, you will be given 125 euros on the 4th of December, okay? But you can buy this and then sell it again, okay? It's just a piece of paper that says that the euros will be delivered to you, this many euros. So can the price of this contract change all the time? This future contract, can the price change? It can't change? Well, I'm always going to get 125,000 euros, right? But can the price in dollars, how much I need to pay, can that change? Yes. Yes, yes of course. That's the idea of a market. Okay? If I buy rice from him, he gives me the paper. Okay? He's going to deliver the rice on the 4th of November. Can I sell that paper to somebody else? Yes. Or do I have to get the rice? What do you think? He gives me the paper, he's going to deliver the rice on the 4th of November. He's a farmer, right? 
Can I sell the paper to him? Yes. Does it have to be the same price? Yes. It has to be the same price that I bought from you? No, it doesn't, right? Why would does it have to be the same price? Maybe there was bad weather. Price of rice got more expensive, right? So of course I'm going to ask him for a higher price. Okay, do you understand? Yes. So we can buy these contracts on the exchange for oil, futures contracts for oil, for anything, for stocks, for currencies, okay? And then later we can buy and sell the futures contract. We can sell the future contract to other people. And why is it easy to buy and sell? Because it's standardized. There are a lot of these contracts in the market. Okay? So it's not like somebody else has a contract for 128,000 euros on the 8th of December. Then I can't compare the price. Okay? But a lot of people have this kind of contract. So I can compare the price easily. Delivery date is the same, and amount is the same. Do you think this is suitable for companies? Yes. No. Why not? Companies, they, their value can change every time. So they don't. They might not need 125,000 euros, right? The company might need 170,000 euros. 180,000 euros, or just 50,000 euros. They might not need the money in the 4th of December, they might need the money in, in on a different date, the 17th of December, okay? So they might want to do the forward contract with the bank, okay? That's the difference between the exchange and the bank, okay? So exchange, you can write this down, exchange, trade, standardized contracts. Do you understand standardized? So write it down, okay? This is the key difference, okay? Bank makes personal contracts or individual okay? Bank makes individual contracts. It can make a forward or an option contract, okay? Then just to make things confusing, on the exchange, a forward contract is not called a forward, it's called a future. So the option is called the same. Okay? So future is basically the same as a forward contract, but it's done on an exchange. Okay? That's a futures contract. <coughs> futures contracts are very useful, and options contracts here are very useful for the oil, anybody who's buying oil. For example, the airline industry. Okay? The airline industry wants to be sure about the price of oil next year. They are going to go onto the exchange. They are going to buy a futures contract for oil. The oil will be delivered next year. Okay? They have the contract. They made the contract for a certain price. Will the price change? Can the price change for them? That they paid for the oil? No, but they can make profit if the price goes up or the price goes down. But well, anyway, they need to use the oil, so they're not, they're just locking in the price. So let's look at the oil, <clears throat> just to think about this example. So, <coughs> what's the risk for an airline? Airline uses a lot of oil. Do you understand oil? Yes. Where can we find oil? Under energy. Okay, let's see. Crude oil. Okay, petrochemicals. Okay, let's say crude oil. So we have crude oil futures here. So if you're an airline, what's the biggest risk for your business? What do you think is a big risk for your business as an airline? You have to sell the ticket now, right? For six months later. You bought a ticket for March to go to Europe, right? What's the risk for me as an airline? The oil price goes up. The oil price goes up. So what should I do to hedge this risk? Price. What? Make a contract to what the oil price? <laughs> Fix or lock the oil price. Okay? Can I do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I can do that. I can make a contract with the oil company on an individual basis. Right? You're going to sell me this much oil at this price for the next year or two years. Or I can go to the futures exchange and buy a standardized contract. So most airlines do that kind of hedging for oil. They buy the future contract for oil. Do you want to do that for your car? 
if you are buying, if you have a car and the price of you think the price of oil will go up, would you like to lock in the price of oil for two years? No. Hmm? No. Do you think consumers would like that product? Yes, an entrepreneur in the United States started that kind of company where consumers can lock in the price of oil by using this kind of future contract, right? Because future contract might be too big for consumers. But if he gets a lot of consumers, then he can lock in the price of oil for the consumers. Do you want to start that company in Russia and Korea? Yeah. After you graduate, you can start a company, right? <laughs> I started in the US. Hedging the price of oil for consumers. Okay, but you have to see if it's suitable. You can ask the consumers if they want to hedge the price of oil. But these days the price of oil looks like it's going to be low for the next couple of years. So maybe you can wait for a couple of years. Okay? Then it might be if there is some problem in the Middle East, usually the price of oil goes up. So. Okay? So <clears throat> we can do the same for oil, we can do the same for FX. We can go here and we can buy the futures contract. But actually most companies prefer the individual aspects, they make a forward contract, not the future, right? But the reason we're talking about this is we want to understand about options, okay? So the CME, we can also make the options contract. The options contract is on the, based on the future contract. So let's go back to our Euro futures, right? So we can see here, we can click on futures or options. So it's the same contract. This one is December 2015. So we can see the price for December 2015. <clears throat> the price is 1.0747. Okay? So this is the people thinking the market, they're trading. They think this will be the price, how many dollars we need to pay in December. Interestingly, in January, what's happening? Do they think the dollar is getting stronger or weaker between December and January? In the market, what do the markets think? The dollar will get stronger or weaker? Weaker. Okay, so this price is here is a stronger dollar. The price here is a weaker dollar. Okay? So we can, this is June 2016, June next year. So if we are predicting the future exchange rate, this can also help us. This is the idea of the markets, right? People are buying and selling contracts for euros. Okay, and we can see most people are trading today, 6,000, 7,000 people traded this one for December. Not that many people for March or June next year. But the option contract is uh, based on the future, right? So in the options, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, we have this same futures contract, okay? But then we have a different vocabulary. We have the strike price, okay? This is, let's say, let's take December. So we have different strike prices here, from 105 up to 110. So you can, basically, in this case, you're fixing the price at 110, at 107, at 105, right? For an options contract, we fix the price. So the option contract is giving us the, <coughs> we have, we choose the exchange rate. The exchange rate will be called the strike price, okay? Do you understand? We choose the exchange rate here. So we can choose whatever suits us. The same that it's the, as the price, maybe 107, right? Or it could be 105, or it could be 109 or 110, right? So this would be the dollar getting. What, what stronger or weaker? That would be a weak dollar, and this would be a strong dollar, okay? Sorry, 105 is strong, and then this is just the normal price. So most people would be around on the normal price, right? So we make a contract that we can exchange euros for dollars at this exchange rate, okay? But what is what is we discussed in the last class? What does the option contract allow us to do? Do we have to do this trade or not? We have to do it, we have the obligation, or we don't have the obligation? 
Okay, we don't have to do this. Do we have the right? Can we do this if we want? Yes. Okay, so we make this contract, but we can. We don't have the obligation to keep the contract. Okay, so we can decide these prices, and then the auctions contract is then traded. So uh, we have to pay the premium, of course, too. So this is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. A lot of things are traded there. So let's continue to discuss about the uh, options, right? So <clears throat> we have different type of options, put or call option. So let's talk, discuss the two of them. Put option is we're selling the currency. So just we have to remember those kind of things, right? So put option, selling foreign currency. Call option, buying foreign currency. Okay? <clears throat> so, uh, it's a specific amount of currency on a specific date, on a specific strike price. We saw strike price on the, on the website. Okay? All three of them are set today. So we set the strike price, we set the date, and we say how much foreign currency it is. A put option is a short position. Okay? So it can be used to offset a long position. So what is a what's a long position? Receiving foreign currency or paying foreign currency? Long position is receiving, right? So we're receiving foreign currency. Okay? So we're going to receive, after we receive the foreign currency, what do we need to do before we pay our salaries? What do we need to do? We receive a foreign currency. Are our workers going to accept the foreign currency? Change it to them. So what do we need to do? We need to sell the foreign currency, okay? We sell the foreign currency, buy our own currency and pay the salaries, okay? So this is what we need to do. So if we have this receivable, we are going to use a put option, okay? So we can remember this. We have a long position, receivable, we use put option, okay? We have a short position, payable, we're going to use a call option, okay? So we have put and call for option contracts. You can try to remember. Okay? So put options provide the firm with a lower limit plot price, a floor, for the foreign currency it expects to receive in the future. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's say that I'm a European company and we looked at the internet, right? I wanted to sell the dollars and buy the euros, okay? So I'm European, European company, I have a long position in dollars, okay? I'm receiving dollars and I need to change to euros, sell my dollars and buy euros, okay? So if, if the futures contract exchange rate is 107, it's expected to be 107, right? Then I can make the contract for 105 or 110. Which one am I going to make the contract for? 105 or 110 in this case? What do you think? So I'm getting the dollars. What's the risk for me? What is the risk? The bad thing that could happen. I'm getting dollars. I'm long the dollar. Do I want the dollar to get weaker or get stronger? If I'm in a long position, do I want the price to go up or go down? So do I want the dollar to get stronger or weaker? Stronger, right? So what's the bad situation? Dollar gets weaker. Which of these is the dollar getting weaker? 1.1, right? So this is the risk. Here and above. If it goes to 118 or 120, that's a big risk, right? So where am I going to make the strike price? 105, 107, or 110? 105. No? Here, 110. Right? This is the risk. This is the big risk, that it goes to 115, or 118, or 120. Okay? So I want to stop. This is like a stop. On the FX trading, you're losing stop loss. Right? Do you understand? Yes. 
So I can take this little bit of loss here. If it exchange changes to 110, okay, I, I'll take a little bit of loss, 3%, okay? I can lose 3% on the foreign exchange. But I don't want to lose 10% or 20%, okay? So I stop it here and I pay the premium, okay? If I, I could make an options contract to get at 105, but the premium is going to be too expensive. Premium is going to be very expensive, right? So I'm not going to do that. Here the premium will be much cheaper. Okay? So I, I will may do this one here. Okay? So <coughs> we're making a lower limit or a floor, like stop loss. Do you understand floor? Yes. It can't go, I know that it's not going to be any worse than this. Okay? I could do it at 107. And then I would make sure I get no foreign exchange loss, okay? Or I could just make a floor on the loss. I can lose 1%, I can lose 2%, okay? So the point of the options is the strike price doesn't have to be the same price as the market price, okay? It can be a different price, okay? So I can make some underneath some floor. It's like insurance, okay, against the weakening foreign currency. If the future spot rate proves to be advantageous, the foreign currency strengthens to here, the option holder will not exercise the put option. So exercise the put option means use the contract. Okay? If it goes to here, I'm not going, I don't need to use the contract. Do you understand exercise? Do you exercise? Do you guys exercise? Hands up if you exercise regularly. Only four students? What kind of exercise do you do? Martial arts? Do you do martial arts? <laughs> Did you say you like martial arts? No? What kind of exercise do you do? <coughs> Aerobics? Walking? <coughs> okay. What about you? Going to the gym? So, exercise means doing something, right? So, in this case, exercise means using or doing something, right? So, by the way, the rest of you, you should be exercising three times a week. Right? At least 20 minutes, three times a week. Healthy body is healthy mind. Did you ever hear that? Reduce the stress. While you're exercising, you're not thinking about anything or worrying about anything, just thinking about the exercise, right? So... Uh, I think it's better for your health. <clears throat> so then, uh, if it gets stronger, we don't need to exercise the option. We just sell the foreign currency in the spot market. So if it goes to here, we'll just, this is okay, it costs us. Uh, it's a better situation, right? So we have the flexibility. So the key advantage of an options contract is flexibility. Do you understand flexibility? Yes. Are you flexible? You said you do stretching? <laughs> flexibility means you can change, right? To take advantage of something. <coughs> so let's have a look at the example. A US company is receiving euros, right? So the other way around, we have a US company receiving euros. So the firm is getting 100,000 euros in 30 days. This is the current spot rate, okay? So the current spot rate, the bid receivable, is worth $125,000. So I'll get 100,000 euros, it'll be worth $125,000. So this firm negotiates a contract with a market maker by bank at a strike price of 1.20. So the strike price is not 1.25, it's 1.20. That is a lower limit. Do you understand lower limit? Yes. So that means that, at the very least, we are going to receive $120,000. That's our worst case scenario. Before our worst case scenario was, it could go down to 110. We'd only get $110,000. All right? So the market maker bank charges a non-refundable fee of $2,000. That's called a premium. Do you understand non-refundable? Can you get the money back? If you go on, on a holiday and you buy some medical insurance and you come back from the holiday, can you call up the insurance company and say, uh, I didn't have any accident, can I get my money back? <laughs> hmm? no. uh, 
then start arguing with them. But you didn't claim the money. I didn't have any accident. Right? No, you can't. So you can't get back the premium. Okay? <clears throat> so if we want to do 130, the premium is going to be very expensive. But here, premium might not be that, not that expensive. $2,000. Okay? Does that seem reasonable to you? You pay $2,000 to make sure that you can't lose more than $120,000. Does that seem reasonable or not reasonable? Depends, well, it depends on your expectation of the exchange rate. If you think the exchange rate is not going to change, maybe you, you think it's unreasonable. But if you think there's a big risk, it could change by 20%, then you're paying $2,000, so 118 will be your sure. You're sure of $118,000 income. Okay? Whereas otherwise you could end up with just 110 or 105. So you're paying some money to be sure of your income. So assume in 30 days the euro US dollar spot rate quote is now 115, 117. So what has the euro done? Discuss with your partner. Did it get stronger or weaker? Am I getting more dollars or less dollars for my euros? Did the euro get stronger or weaker? You should be able to answer this question quickly because you look at the base currency, the one on the left. Okay? If you know that if the number is going up, something is happening. If the number is going down, something is happening, right? So you should be able to do that in two seconds. Okay? Which is the base currency? Euro. Is the euro going up or going down? Hmm? 30 days ago it was 1.25. Now it's 1.15. Is it going up or going down? 30 days ago, do you understand the go? Yes. Hmm? Chane? <laughs> the euro was 125. Okay, in 30 days, 30 days later, who ate? Eh? The, the euro is 115. Is the euro going up or going down, the base currency? It's going down. Is it getting stronger or weaker? Okay, so the base currency, if the number is going up, it's getting stronger. If the number is going down, it's getting weaker, right? So we should be able to do that quickly, right? So the euro is getting weaker. So what is the account receivable worth at this spot rate? And how does this compare to the rate 30 days ago? I'll discuss with your partner. The, <coughs> we said that it was we were going to get 100,000 euros, right? So we were getting the receivable was 100,000 euros. Okay. So what is the receivable work today compared to 30 days ago? So what's the difference? 10,000? 10,000 what? 10,000 what? Dollars. I have to pay, or I will get $10,000 less, right? Do I want to get $10,000 less? No. Not really, right? So what should the US firm do with its options contract? Use it or not use it? Use the contract. How much will I get if I use the contract? Here I'm getting 115,000, right? How much will I get if I use the contract? 120. Anyway, I've paid the premium already, okay? So it would be minus here or minus here, okay? So the best we can get is 118 because we have to take away the premium, right? So the euro has weakened by 10 cents. The count receivable is now worth 115,000 or 10,000 less than the original date, the US firm should exercise its put option. It will get 120,000 less the premium, so finally 118,000. 
you understand that transaction? Yes. Was the company happy they made the options contract? Yes. They were, right? If the euro changed the other way and it went to 135, would they use the option contract or not? Okay, they won't use. Are they would they be happy they made an options contract and not a forward contract if it went to 135? Yes, because it would give them the option. With a forward contract, you wouldn't have a choice. It goes to 135. If I have no contract, I can get $135,000, right? But I have the forward contract, I have no choice. I have to change at 125, okay? But if I have the options contract, then yes, I can, I can take the 135, okay? So here we can see this one, because we, we already discussed, we can go through quickly, right? So the, we have 135, uh, the account receivable is now worth $135,000, okay? So the US firm is not going to exercise its option. Instead, it's going to sell the euros in the spot market and get their $135,000 in the market, okay? I don't need to use the contract, just go to the market and get more money. Okay, so the point of a put option, put option is for receivable. Okay, when you remember that, I'm receiving foreign currency. Okay, put option, locking in the lower limit on the foreign currency. Okay, for the long position. So, <clears throat> if we get a favorable move, we can walk away or tear up the contract. This is not possible with a forward contract. We can't walk away with the forward contract. That's the diff big difference, okay? So let's look at the call option. The same, but the other way around, okay? Call option is we're going to buy an amount, a specified amount of foreign currency at a specified future date. Why do we need to buy? Because we have a short position, okay? So if we have a short position, what are we doing with the foreign currency? We're paying accounts payable, okay? So we need to pay the foreign currency. Do we want the currency to get stronger or weaker if we need to pay it? Weaker. Weaker, right? We get a loan in a foreign currency, we want it to get weaker. Okay, it's easier to pay it back, okay? So in this case, we have a call option, which is going to be, we will need to buy the foreign currency because we need to pay the other company and the other company the foreign company needs to pay needs to pay the salaries of its company in the local currency, right? So we need to buy, we're paying the foreign currency, we need to buy the foreign currency, give it to the foreign company, the foreign company needs to pay their salary, okay? So this time a call option is buying the foreign currency. Okay? So this time we're going to have an upper limit price, not a lower limit, upper limit. Okay, we don't want to pay too much for the foreign currency. <clears throat> so if the future spot rate proves to be advantageous, the foreign currency weakens, we're not going to exercise our option. We'll just use the spot market. So let's look at the example. So a US firm has an account payable. It has to pay 100,000 pounds in 30 days. Okay, this is the spot rate. Great British pound, US dollar. So the payable will cost $147,000 at the current ask rate. So what's the risk for the company? What's the risk for the company here? We've got 174, right? Pound and dollar, 174. So if we say one. 70 or 180, which is the risk for the company? 180, okay, it's going to have to pay 180 dollars to get the pounds. Okay, here I prefer to pay 170 to get the pounds, right? So this is the risk side here, okay? So which side is the, is the strike price going to be on? This side or this side? This one, right? We're going to try and limit this it could be here is unlimited. It could go on unlimited loss, right? So we want to make a line here to limit limit the loss. Okay? So the firm negotiates a, a call contract with the strike price of 180. 
So here, our loss is limited here. It can't go any further than 180. Okay, so the US firm has established an upper limit exchange rate for these pounds. Okay, so the market maker bank is going to charge a fee of $3,000 for the contract. This is called the premium. So I assume in 30 days the Great British US dollar spot rate is 184, 186. So this time we should be quick, quicker. What has the pound done from 30 days ago? So at Chan A ago it was 172. In 30 days, Hu A it's 184. So what has happened to the pound? Okay, that was better, right? That was a quicker answer. Pound is the base currency, it's going up. So the pound got stronger. Okay? Then, is that good news for us or bad news for us? Bad news, right? So what is the amount of account payable at this spot rate and how does it compare to the one 30 days ago? So what's the difference? It's bad news. How much is the difference? 174 and 186. What's the difference? How much more dollars do I need to pay to get the pounds? 12,000, right? 12,000 of bad news. Okay. So what should the US firm do with its options contract? Use it or don't use it? We made the options contract at 180. Use the contract. Okay. And then what is going to be the best US dollar amount we need to pay? The lowest US dollar amount we need to pay? So we made the contract at 180. How much was the premium? 3,000. So what's the lowest amount we need to pay? 183,000. Okay? 180,000 plus 3,000. So the pound has strengthened, we said. Okay? Uh, the US firm should exercise the call option and buy the pound at the strike price. Okay, so it will be $183,000 per pound. So then on the other hand, what happened now? The spot rate is now 165, 166. Is that good news or bad news? Good news. Can you, can you, uh, is she okay? So, uh, that's good news. So we need to pay how much in this case? 166, right? What should the US firm do with its options contracts? Use or don't use? Walk away, right? So what is the optimal amount? 169, okay, plus three. So we can see here, uh, 169, okay? So do you have any question about that? In this case, we're locking in the upper limit. We don't want to pay any more than this. Yes? Fee, is it always fixed? No, the fee depends on, we're not going to study in this class how the fee is calculated. Why? Because the guy who, who made that equation won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> because the equation was so complicated. Okay? If you want, you can study about that in graduate program or PhD. How to make the strike price, right? Or how to make the premium. Do you want to work for an insurance company calculating premiums? No. Why not? <coughs> no? Anyway, it's a, it's a good job, right? Working for the insurance company, actually, it's called actuary, usually high salary, right? Uh, so, anyway, there are things which we have to take into account for the premium. The time. What do you think? The longer the time, the higher the premium or lower premium? Higher. higher premium. It's more uncertainty. Over the longer time, more uncertainty, higher premium. Okay? The volatility of the exchange rate. Is the exchange rate volatile or not volatile? What do you think? Volatile exchange rate, high premium or low premium? Volatile, it changes on high premium. Not volatile, lower premium. Okay? Uh, 
then uh, so we have to think about a number of different factors. That's called the Black Skulls model. They put all those things into the model, understand the model, and they come out with the premium. And then you have to decide, is it worth it for you to pay this premium or not? Okay? To, you can also check the premium on the CME. If the bank is telling you a premium which is very different than the one on the CME, on the exchange, it's not good value, right? So it should just be a little bit more expensive with the bank because they give an individualized one. So you expect to pay a little bit more with the bank, okay? So, any other questions? That was a good question. Okay, so again, the advantage against the forward contract is we can walk away. <coughs> so let's look at the overview of the options contract. The advantage is we can take advantage of a favorable change. Do you understand that phrase? Take advantage of a favorable change? Okay, in the spot exchange rate. A disadvantage, it can be costly. We have a non-refundable premium. Okay, if the exchange rate moves in our favor, if the exchange rate goes here, we can't get our premium back. Or if the exchange rate stays the same, or even here, just slightly worse. We just lost our premium, right? If we hadn't used premium, would have been no problem. So disadvantage is we have to pay the upfront fee. Okay? Uh, this, can, this, this premium is especially relevant for small companies. They don't have much cash flow. And I have to pay the money upfront. The premium I have to pay at the start. Okay? So if I don't have the cash, it's not as easy. Then it's more difficult to understand. Like, we have to try and understand is the premium good value or bad value? Okay? It's not easy to understand as the forward contracts. So here you asked me about the uh, factors, right? So here, they're not putting all the factors and all the equations, but we said time. Uh, time, the longer it is, the more uncertainty, higher the premium is going to be. Volatility, high degree of movement, then volatility. Volatility is the most important factor in options pricing. Okay. Are you going to give me an option if I'm doing business with Zimbabwe? Very cheap premium or expensive premium? Okay. So, uh, in some currency like the RMB, you might not need to do because it's so controlled, right? Or the premium would be like quite low because the Chinese one is managed currency. So, uh, the strike price, of course, the price we decide, right? If this price is closer, then the premium is going to be lower. As this gets further away, uh, premium can be higher, okay? Depending on whether we're doing the call or put option, okay? If it's on this side in the call option, the further it goes on this side, it's going to be more expensive. So it depends where we put the strike price, also the premium. So these are the main uh, things affecting the premium. So then just discuss with your partner what is the difference between options contract and forward contracts? So we're really talking about this. What is the advantage and disadvantage of options contracts against forward contracts? Okay, so just you can discuss with them first what is an options contract and what is the advantage and disadvantage compared to forward contracts.
What is an options contract? You can explain options contract. Can anybody explain options contract? You can get more points for participation in class to answer the questions. <laughs> Teacher asked a general question. Yes? What is an options contract? It's for contract, but you have the choice to follow the contract. You have to what? You, have to, you can leave the contract. You, can, you have the choice, right? You have the right, but not the obligation, right? You have the choice, you can use the contract, but you don't have to. What do you have to give in return? You have to pay a premium. Okay. So then, next question, anybody can answer. What is the advantages of the options contract compared to the forward contract? Yes? So? so, what can we do? For safety. We don't have the obligation to use the contract, right? We don't want to use it. So what's the advantage we get? We can get a profit. In what case? By paying less. How can we get more profit? That's the question. In what case? In what situation? If what? We get more profit if? <coughs> Can anybody finish the question a sentence? Help? We get more profit if? Yes? If the exchange rate moves favorably. Right? Do you understand the exchange rate moves favorably? Yes. Okay. Then the, la the last question, what is the disadvantage of the options contract? <coughs> yes? It's unrefundable. What's unrefundable? Yeah. <coughs> the option is unrefundable. So if the exchange rate goes favorable, fa favorable yes. Wait. So you, 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 can, uh, you can go against the contract, but you still have to pay for it. What do you have to pay? What's the name? Pay for the Premium. Premium. Okay. Another disadvantage? Compared to the forward, there's one, another disadvantage. Harder to understand, okay? It's harder to understand and figure out the, to figure out the price compared to the the uh, forward contract. So let's take a break now for 10 minutes.